chair, fellow members, no guests. Well, that's your silver guest, aren't you? No? Oh, if it <laughs> Okay, we're trying to general. His name, Matthew Hopkins. Anybody heard of him? No, no, okay, right. Hammer Films, Hammer Horror Films did one called The Witch on the General with Vincent Price. Not very accurate. To start with, Matthew Hopkins was only 25 when he was working as a witch hunter. So, Vincent Price was ancient. What did he do? Well, witch finding is what he did. He didn't have parliamentary authority to be a general. That was nothing at all. He was just a witch hunter. Why was it so important to find witches? Well, in that period of time, we had civil war. We had a massive group of Puritans where Matthew Hopkins was in East Anglia, all terrified that the Royalists would turn up and slaughter them. They had cows that were barren. They had hey, what? Hey, what is they had these crazy situations where crops were failing. There were people with boils, there was all sorts of disease in the area. It was just awful. Who could you blame? But of course the little old lady who used to be in a shack on her own with her cat, who used to make these potions when you're ill, her. She's a witch. She's what's causing it. But that's the basic theory behind why they went mad. But the hysteria was so much that they actually went hunting for these witches. Now in the UK we had, not UK, sorry, England, we had Pendle witches, uh, ten of those were hanged. Leicester had, I think, fourteen hanged, and I can't remember how many were in Oxford. But they were killing off people throughout the country. Now we've got nothing on Germany. Six hundred witches burnt in one day. Six hundred. The most we ever got was 22, so small time we were. Now Matthew Hopkins realised very early on that he could make money. You know, just imagine making money out of killing people. But he came up with the concept that if he as a witch finder could go to a town and say, I'll find your witches, you pay me one pound for every witch I find. One pound. In those days, that was an awful lot because sixpence was the average wage of a labourer. Sixpence and a pound he was getting for every witch. So how did he do it? You know, how on earth do you find witches? Well, you find witches with these. Um, surprisingly, this book, Demonology, was written by King James I. He hated witches. His advisers told him that at least three times witches had tried to kill him, and so he wrote this book about how to find them, make sure you kill them. And he also, remember he created the um, authorised version of the Bible, uh, it was never authorised, so it's King James's Bible, uh, he wrote, well he didn't write it, he arranged it to be written. And one of the things he did, because of this book, insisted they changed one of the phrases, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. If you check the Hebrew, it's thou shalt not suffer a poisoner to live. Nothing to do with witches, but because he hated witches, he got that bit changed. So that's that book. The other book that Matthew Hopkins used was Malleus Maleficarum, written by a Benedictine monk in the 16th century. It's the, called the, wit, the Power of Witches, that's what it means. And it's the entire book on how to find them and how to deal with them. So that's the two books that he was using to find witches. Now, England had a very strict law about uh, torture. You don't do it. It's not allowed. Matthew Hopkins, well, it wasn't quite torture, but it wasn't far off. To get a witch to confess, he used deprivation of sleep. So you'd keep them awake for four days, four nights, and at the end of that they're going to confess to anything, to get some sleep. Or, you put them on bread and water, and that's it. 
for a week, and again, they give up pretty quick. Now in the old days, they used to use thumbscrews in the rack and various other things. When you couldn't get someone to confess, what you did, you had ladies to do the women and men to do the men. They had to shave every hair off the body and then look for what were known as teats, their skin tags for us, we know them as skin tags, or odd looking moles. These were where the incubus and succubus, or even their familiars, would come and suck blood. So if you found these marks, you then took a special needle. And if you stabbed it into the mole or whatever, if it didn't hurt and it didn't bleed, they're a witch. But Matthew was very clever. His tool was retractable. So when he stabbed it in, it would go in, out, and just make a little mark because it went up into the handle. So it didn't actually work. So anyway, that's what he did. He found um, these techniques which made people confess. Now the great thing was, if you get a witch to confess, next move, get more names from the coven. So then you arrest them, that's more money you bring it in. So he made himself extremely wealthy. And when he got into real trouble and couldn't get any confessions whatsoever, there was one final trick he, he invented himself. Tie them to a chair, chuck them into the water. If they float, the devil's protecting them, so they're guilty. If they sink and drown, they were innocent. That's pretty good. You know, guaranteed that one is. So, Matthew did 18 months. That's all he did, 18 months. And what happened to him was 300 hanged, three men hanged, and he retired. And the great thing is, when he retired, two things were said. He died of tuberculosis in, 18, in 1647, which is just after he retired, or he was arrested and tried as a witch and found guilty and executed. And I think he got his just desserts. And if you want to look at these folks, you can look at them at the back. Thank <laughs> you.